All right. You know, I keep getting comments about why we do this. Now, a lot of them are just being pain in the butt. And then they say it much differently than I just stated it. Uh, they're not honest in their question, and but some of them are. So this is kind of in reference to that. I'm going to try to answer that. And I may be doing several of these videos and giving you some examples of why we do this. And this is why we do First Amendment audits. So I'm just going to start out and, and jump right into it. I'm going to share the screen here. Share screen, and I'm going to... Okay, then it shouldn't be an issue for us to look. It's just not. I wish that you just want to search when your house is happening. Like, why don't you want to search, like, my house or something? You can't do that, though. You want to fucking resist? I'm not resisting. You want to fucking resist? Do you get some ID on you? I do not. How come you do not have your ID on? Why do I need my ID? Have I done something wrong? Have I broken a law? Now, on the first one, that's an old video, and I don't know where it actually originated from. If somebody does know, uh, let me know, and uh, I'll post it in the comment. I'll post a link to it so you can see the whole thing. That officer sitting there, I mean, if it's not obvious to some of you why we do this after just that video by itself, but the problem is, we find these videos and we find these officers all the damn time. We don't have a hard time finding them. It's easy. You don't have to work hard at it. And judging by the hundreds of videos we have out there between the different uh, auditors, you ought to be able to see that yourselves. So why do we do this? There's your first video. The man's cussing at this kid. Then he hits him and takes his keys to illegally search a car. That had nothing to do with the original uh, occurrence of the, the, the situation in hand. All right, so let's move on. Now, this one here is uh, one of David's videos with uh, the new activist from Dallas. I'll put a link in. The description to both channels at the end of this thing. Uh, so here we go. I've got a call out here, sir. Okay. But that being said, I didn't say you broke the law. You okay. don't have the right to identify me. You understand that? No, sir. Okay. Here we go. He just admitted he has no RAS. So we know he understands this, all right? He Because uh, at the end of the video, when David asked him about being detained, he walks away and he lets David go. So I think that's proof right there. He understands what RAS is. And I think it's, he, he, you could not be a police officer for one day without understanding RAS and understand in here in Texas, the law for, for being uh, required to ID. In this situation, it's because we'll leave out cars being stopped, okay? They're on the side of the road. They haven't done anything illegal. Suspicious doesn't mean shit, all right? Absolutely nothing. They're doing a First Amendment protected activity. This idiot with the badge knows he cannot force them to ID under 3802. You can't not understand 3802 for a day of being a police officer because you deal with this every day and probably multiple times. That's what they do. Every encounter, they want ID. And it doesn't matter whether they just, you look at them wrong when you're walking down the side of the road and it pisses them off. They'll come up to you and demand ID. A lot of them, not all of them. And this one's one of them. This is a one of the little tyrants that thinks he can do anything he fucking wants excuse my language, and he, he thinks he's up against the typical uh, individual out there that'll be scared of him and that doesn't know the law. Now, 3802 says, 
unless you are lawfully arrested, you do not have to ID. Suspicious activity, being questioned by a cop, the cop being called out on a call, doesn't mean shit. If you don't have RAS, reasonable articulate suspicion, you don't even have, as a police officer, don't even have the right to detain anybody. That is the guiding principle. That is the guiding law. There's none of this, well, you're suspicious, so we're investigating. Bullshit. If you don't have RAS, you do not detain. Absolutely no excuses. That's it. I'm called out to call on a scene. Mm -hmm. It's a complaint. Mm -hmm. I'm out here because of a complaint. Mm -hmm. You guys taking pictures. I have the, the right to identify. And you do not have the right to tell me no. You don't have the right to say I don't have it. <coughs> you do. But All right. So here we are with the 3802. The man's a liar. He's dishonest. As far as I'm concerned, when a, the minute a police officer stops you and lies to you, from then on, he cannot be trusted. He cannot be trusted at all for anything, no matter what after that. Uh, he's immoral, if you want to put morals in there. Uh, so after that, you might as well just shut up. But we know what we do here on the audits. We keep think we, we try to to teach the police officers, even though most of the time they already know and they don't care, and teach the people that watch the videos. All right. So let's go. Take you to jail too. Okay. So you're making that clear. Do you have your idea? Huh? Okay. No, I don't need you to code it for me. I don't need your law degree to throw it on you guys. Well, you need somebody to throw a damn law degree at you because you obviously, if you really don't know, you obviously need some help. You don't know that I have to know. You're right, I don't. You don't know if I can take you to jail or not either. Okay. Never promised me that. Yes, we do know. Well, maybe I shouldn't jump in here. But the man's a little tyrant. He should not be a police officer. There is no room on any police department for any asshole like this one. None whatsoever. Now, I'll take this opportunity to say we got a letter or there's a, a memo or a statement that I'm going to go through from this police department's chief at the end of this. So don't run away. If I ask you, request your felon to give me your identification. Why don't you call 3802 and you'll answer your own question? Sir, I got people who don't want you to take your pictures out here. Huh? You're, you're absolutely correct, sir. I, I'm not out here to get a bunch of lip from you, sir, okay? Now there we go. The little bitch is getting butt hurt. He's got a badge. He's got butt hurt. Now he's going to start yelling and try to intimidate. We don't need him. Nobody. Like I said. These kind of officers are getting, well, I didn't say this while ago, but I'll say it now. These kind of officers are getting cops killed. This is the kind of asshole that gets other cops killed, good and bad. We don't need them. We don't want them. Get rid of them. I'm actually trying to figure out what you're doing. Officer Beard, yes. Take it down to level, please. I'll take it down when I'm ready to take it down. Sir. Okay. Am I being detained? No, you're not being detained. You have a nice day. Okay. All right, so... That to me means he knows what RAS is and he can't detain. And I think he probably even knows uh, Turner versus Driver now because uh, Turner versus Driver, if he would have detained, that's where he would have gotten in trouble and he could have been sued outside of his, you know, protection from the immunity from with the police department. That's where Turner comes in. But, all right, I'm going to, there's something else, but I'm going to wait till we get to the, uh, so he knows he will rise, the, he knows he will leave. Well, I will get there. Bye -bye. All right, this is the one I want. All right, this is from, all right. 
Kevin Rivas. Uh, Police Chief, Westworth Village. And that's where this last video took place. On June 6, 2007, two members of the Dallas and Houston activist group were located outside the Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base, Fort Worth, with camera equipment to conduct what they call a First Amendment audit. Their goal was to record the interaction between themselves and either the base police or the local police because of their recording of the Navy security procedures at the main gate. <clears throat> the Naval Air Station contacted the department and requested us to respond to the investigation to investigate the film. During this interaction, a member of our organization, that's the little tyrant we just saw, contacted the individual recording and advising them of the why he responded. During the interaction, the officer requested identification. The, member declined, the, the members declined to provide identification to our officer. During the interaction, the officer indicated he could, he could arrest them for failure to ID. Uh, the situation began to escalate. The situation didn't begin to escalate. A little tyrant escalated it on purpose because he got his little butt hurt. After realizing they would not identify themselves, the officer determined the situation as a non-hostile threat. Bullshit. He didn't determine shit. David shut him down. Both of them shut him down. David said, if we're not being detained, you know, David asked if we were being detained. He said no, and they left. David and, and okay, anyway. David and them shut him down. They ended it there. Not the police officer. So the reason I'm going through this letter is, at first when I got, I saw this, I thought, hey, this chief got it. He understands, all right? But he's manipulating this shit to make it look good for his, his department. He's, he's giving us a line of bullshit. All right. Uh, to me, the non-hostile, hostile, blah, 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 uh, to the installation and returned to the patrol car and cleared the call. A few days later, this interaction of group posted the, the, the contact to YouTube as well as the department Facebook page after they had opportunity to edit the recording. Now see, opportunity to edit the recording. Now, there was no reason to put that in there except for one thing. He's trying to place it in people's minds that they edited things to make it look bad for the police officer. Well, they didn't edit that part. They may have edited some of the ending and some of the beginning because nobody needed the beginning or before they got there or before anything started. There was no editing in the middle of that from the beginning of it to the end of that interaction with that police officer. I saw no evidence of any editing to make anybody look good or bad. All right. Anything bad that that officer look looks like that's because he did it all by himself. Nobody made him do it. Nobody did anything but him. All right. Upon receiving the video of the incident, we recognized our conduct during this situation have should have been better. Yeah, it should have been better. Kiss my ass. Our officer was investigated, investigating a call for service of suspicious in, individuals, which is not illegal. It's not, uh, you can't detain somebody for suspicious activity. Suspicious is, is in the mind of the beholder. And, and the videoing like we do is, it's a First Amendment protected activity which cannot be deemed suspicious or illegal. All right. And as such was correct in asking for identification. Asking is okay. But he demanded after a while. And he threatened to arrest. That's, that's threatening to commit violence. That's threatening to arrest illegally. That's threatening to imprison somebody illegally. Uh, so let's go on. Failed to, I uh, mean, uh, correct to arrest them if the, what did, I think I skipped some. At the time of the interaction, the officer also believed he was correct to say he could arrest them if 
they failed to ID. The officer was incorrect in his interpretation of the of the based law based upon recent law in Texas. No, there's no recent law in Texas that this, this is based off of. 3802 has been around for years. It's not new. And it's always said the same thing for years now. If you are not lawfully arrested, you do not have to ID. And that doesn't mean that if you're arrested, remember it says lawfully. If, you're, if you don't believe you're lawfully arrested, and if you know you're not lawfully arrested, if you choose, you can say no, and then they're gonna arrest you anyway. But you got them by the yin yangs if they're not careful. All right, so there is no new case law that changes anything. But here, I think he's talking about Turner versus Driver, which means now they know that they can be taken outside of their, the, the individual police officer who screws up, could be taken outside of his immunity. And that's what it says. It talks about that, the Turner, uh, Turner versus Driver, talks about that, and that it's total, completely legal for people to video police and such. All right. It is paramount the law enforcement officer understood. We under, yeah, understands. We cannot solely arrest or threaten to arrest a citizen solely based upon the failure to produce identification. And it's been that way for years. Nothing new. Since the incident, we have reviewed our policy as well. Blah, 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 blah. Now, see, at first when I saw this, I read it one time and I'm thinking, hey, yeah, they got it. They understand. And maybe they do because with the re-education that they're talking about in the last part. Uh, but the chief is a word twisting. I'm not going to say anything else. But I'll leave you with that, that word you want to replace. But you can see he's twisting words. He's full of shit. And that is why you get police officers like this. You do not have police officers like that on your department for very long, unless the chief allows it. The chief is just as guilty when he allows a police officer to stay on after he finds out that they're acting like this. Now, how much you want to bet this chief is laughing. I think the man's probably laughing at us in the background and maybe not. I hope I am wrong. But after he twists these words and everything, I don't trust him a bit. And I bet that police officer goes out there and does the same damn shit over and over again, even after this. All right. So uh, I don't really know what else. Not, it's not long, probably a long enough video after this already. So I'm going to stop sharing here. And I think I got my point across. I'm just going to say I'm going to come back and do some more, I think, on these situations as time goes by. Hope you enjoyed. See you later. This is PNP News, and I'll leave some links in the description, and we'll see you later. Bye.